Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and today I have a book haul for you. I have books that I purchased from the Who Done It Mystery Bookstore that I will tell you about in a minute. And I have some free books that I got from the library and some wonderful gifts from some wonderful people. So let's just dive right in. Who Done It Mystery Bookstore is a, a new and used bookstore, mystery bookstore in Winnipeg, where I used to live in Manitoba, up here in Canada. And it's a bookstore that's been in the city for years and years and years. And it's a fantastic bookstore. I love that it's got both new and used books. I also love that they have an online catalog that you can order books and they will ship them to you. And so I went just a tad crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and had some books shipped to me, but um, I'm really excited. I, I found some books that I've been looking for for a while and some others that I've been wanting to try. Uh, so let's just dive right into the books that I got from the Whodunit Mystery Bookstore. I got The Slaying of the Shrew by Simon Hawk. This is a Shakespeare and Smythe um, mystery. I read this series I think I read it in September and October 2020 and I really quite enjoyed it. Um, Shakespeare is a main character and also Simington Tuck Smythe is the other main character and um, the, each book has somewhat of a connection to one of Shakespeare's plays but they're really just good historical mysteries and so this is um, the second or yeah, it's the second one in the series. And so I was excited to find that. I've been on the lookout for that, for this series. And so I was excited to find one. I also got The Widow's Club by Dorothy Canal. This is another series that I've been trying to collect and I only need one or two more, possibly just one more after I bought this one. This is a fun, a fun kind of cozy series set in England. And the main character is Nellie Haskell and um, she kind of just lives her life but ends up getting um, kind of uh, involved in mysteries and murders. Her husband is a chef and uh, yeah I just really enjoy this series. It's an older series. I haven't reread it in a long time. I've been trying to collect it all first. Yeah this one is from 1988 and it is Yeah, it's an earlier one in the series, the second or third, maybe. All right, and then I got one. I learned about this book from Angie at Literary Labors. This is um, A Wicked Way to Burn by Margaret Miles. This is another historical mystery series, uh, mystery book, but it is in, set in the States in 1763. Witchcraft or murder? With the end of the French and Indian War and a new king on England's throne, it seems the colonies have entered a peaceful and prosperous new era. And though the fashionable ladies of Boston might find Bracebridge altogether too peaceful to be stimulating, young widow Charlotte Willett likes it just as it is. But the calm of the little village is about to be shattered by a wealthy stranger who bursts into flame by the side of the road and then disappears. Ooh witchcraft or murder indeed. Now I was very very excited to find these next three books because it completes a series that I have um, been wanting to collect and what I wanted to reread during July for Jane Austen July. So I was super excited to find these because I now have the whole series. This is Suspense and Sensibility by Carrie Bibris or First Impressions Revisited. This is from her Mr. and Mrs. Darcy mystery series, which I love. Uh, North by Northanger or The Shades of Pemberley by Carrie Bibris. And The Deception at Lyme or The Peril of Persuasion. So there's seven books in this series and so she has one for each of the six main novels plus Sanditon. Um, and so I just love it and so each one the main characters are Mr. and Mrs. Darcy so they're set kind of after the events of Pride and Prejudice 
but they're just a really fun, um, cozy historical mystery series and I'm excited to have them all now and I can read the series again during Jane Austen July. I also found uh, Death Under Sail by C.P. Snow, his first novel, an enthralling mystery of mounting unease. And as far as I understand, this is the only mystery that C.P. Snow wrote. He wrote a lot of other books, but not other mysteries. And this is a book from... 1932 this was originally published six guests are detained on their murdered hosts wary halfway through a holiday on the norfolk broads one of them has killed roger mills and as the enigmatic finbo points out all of them hated him so there you go and i found another in um Peter Lo Lovesy's Sergeant Crib series. This is a case of spirits. I love I love this addition to you. Isn't that fantastic? So Peter Lovesy wrote mm, six or seven in this series. It's a Victorian mystery series. Um, Sergeant Crib and Constable Thackeray impeded rather than helped by Inspector Jowett investigate some strange robberies, some even stranger occult phenomena, and the murder by electrocution of an up-and-coming medium in 1885 London. So yeah, that's fantastic. This is a series he wrote, I believe, in the 70s. Yes, this one was first published in 1975. All right, and then I found a very early um, PC Doherty, Paul Doherty. Uh, this was published when he was still using the pseudonym of Paul Harding. This is the third in his Sorrowful Mysteries of Brother Athelstan series. This is Murder Most Holy. This is a historical mystery series set in 1379 in London, and the main character is Brother Athelstan. Uh, and again, I really enjoy this series, and um, I've been trying to collect it, especially the earlier books. They're getting a, they're a little bit harder to find, so I was really excited to find this one. And then I found um, another Darren Lake in her John Rawlings series. This is Death at the Devil's Tavern. This is a Regency era. Well, no, sorry, Georgian. This is a Georgian era historical mystery series. John Rawlings is uh, an apothecary in the series and there's another character who is um, I, and I think John Rawlings might actually be a, a true historical uh, person but um, John Fielding the famous Bow Street magistrate is also a character in this book and this one is I believe the third in the series as well. So today's book haul is brought to you by the third in a series. <laughs> okay, and then I also found Malice of Forethought by Francis Isles. This is a book that I've been looking for a while, but it's been out of print for a long time and just in 2020, maybe late 2020, um, they started, they re were reprinting it. Um, and this is a classic, classic vintage mystery. This was originally written in um, 1931, and this edition is was published by in 1920. It's got an introduction by Colin Dexter that he wrote in 1999, and um, this is a mystery. Um, this is a mystery, but you see everything through the eyes of the killer, which is really intriguing, especially for a book written in 1930, which is awesome. Summer 1930, the hottest day of the year, and Dr. Bickley has murder in mind. <laughs> and then I found another one in the Sir Robert Carey mystery series. This is a Clash of Spheres by P.F. Chisholm. This is another series that I've been slowly collecting because they're hard to find. These are Elizabethan um, era historical mysteries. 
late August 1592, Sir Robert Carey, cousin to Queen Elizabeth from the wrong side of Henry VIII's blanket, remains at his post on the borders at Carlisle. So he is up at the border between England and Scotland, and um, each be each book is a different mystery and this is this is a fantastic series really well written very atmospheric great characters great mysteries I do really really like this series okay and then I've got sleep of death this is another Shakespearean murder mystery this is by Philip Gooden Philip Gooden is one of the medieval murderers I talked about the, those books in a previous video and so when I saw this um, available at the Whodunit Mystery Bookstore, I had to pick it up and give it a give it a try. To sleep, oh no, sorry, I'll say it, I'll say it correctly. To die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil? Must give us pause. And that's of course a quote from Hamlet. In the last decade of Elizabeth I's reign, Nick Revel, an aspiring young actor, comes to London seeking fame and fortune. Once there, he stumbles into temporary employment with the Chamberlain's Men, a newly established company at the Globe Theatre in Southwark. Thrown out of his digs after an unfortunate incident involving his landlady and a brimming chamber pot, Nick is offered lodging at the, a wealthy Tameside mansion by a black-clad youth whose father has just died and whose mother has remarried his uncle. Hmm. Pondering on the similarities between the young man's story and William Shakespeare's newest tragedy, Hamlet, Nick is charged with the task of finding out whether foul play was involved in the death of the old man and hasty remarriage of his younger voluptuous wife. Very soon, Nick uncovers evidence that something is indeed rotten in the heart of the Elliot household. While a bloodied shirt, an apothecary's second sight, and a midnight jaunt in the London fields lead him ever closer to danger. And then the finger of suspicion begins to point to his enigmatic employer, Mr. William Shakespeare, author, actor, and shareholder in The Chamberlain's Men. Oh no! <laughs> so I'm not sure if this is the first in that series or not. This was written in 2000, um, and I, it doesn't say, it may be the first in the series, um, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay, just a couple more. I got a couple John Joan Cog Coggins, um, which I was super excited. So I own one of these. I own, um, uh, hang on. I own Who Killed the Curate. So Joan Coggin wrote just a few mysteries in the 40s. And so I found Dancing with Death. Lady Lupin is called in when a Christmas house party turns deadly. And these are reprinted by Rue Morgue Vintage Mysteries. This was originally published in 1947. And then I also found Penelope Passes or Why Did She Die? And this is another Lady Lupin mystery by Joan Coggin, originally published in 1947. And then I was very excited to find this, The Complete Christie, an Agatha Christie encyclopedia by Matthew Bunsen. This was published in 2000. Which poison was used most frequently in Agatha Christie's novels? How many of her novels featured a butler? Exactly where on the train were the suspects located in Murder on the Orient Express? How many actors have portrayed Hercule Poirot? Get a clue, or a lot of them, in The Complete Christie, simply the most comprehensive guide to the life and works of the immortal Dame Agatha Christie. So it has a comprehensive biography of Agatha Christie, including new theories on her strange disappearance in 1926, plot synopses that offer colorful capsules of the story without giving away the solutions, a to Z entries on characters from vicars to butlers, police sergeants to maids, each cross-referenced to the story or novel. That is going to be super helpful to me as I build my Agatha Christie universe. Detailed listing of all films, television programs, radio shows, and documentaries. Up-to-date entries on the most recent releases of previously unpublished Christie writings 
and 60 illustrations, book, including book covers, shots from movies, and stage productions. So I was super excited to find this. This is going to be a great reference for me as I do my Agatha Christie read-through project. So those are the books that I got from the Who Done It Mystery Bookstore. I also got one from Amazon. This is A Step So Grave by Catriona McPherson. This is part of her Dandy Gilver series. This is a historical mystery series set in Scotland in the 20s, late 20s and early 30s, I believe. This is a later one in the series published in 2018. I love this series uh, and so I was super excited I got it for 75% off on Amazon. Okay, and then I got three free books from the library. This is The Crooked Spire by Chris Nixon. This is, um, let's see, I, I don't know if this is part of a series or not. I think it might be, it might be the first in a series, but it's set in 1361. Orphaned by the Black Death, all John possesses are the tools that belong to his father, a carpenter, and an uncanny ability to work wood. His travels bring him to Chesterfield, where he finds work erecting the spire of the new church. But no sooner does he begin than the master carpenter is murdered and John himself becomes a suspect. I also got Goodbye, Pic Goodbye Piccadilly by Cynthia Harold Eagles. In 1914, they face a new kind of war. So this is historical fiction. It's the first in the series, and it's set um, at the beginning of World War II. So it's the first in her War at Home series set against the real events of 1914. Goodbye Piccadilly is extraordinary in scope and imagination as an, and is a compelling introduction to the Hunter family. So that sounded interesting. And then I also found Death in the Tuscan Hills by Marco Vici. Now I've never heard of this author or this series, but this looks fantastic. So this is a book set in Italy, written by an Italian writer and um, originally published in Italian, translated by Stephen Sartarelli. Sar Sar sorry. Um, the other thing that I love is that it is um, set in 1967. Spring 1967. Last winter, a flood left tragedy and devastation. Now Florence is beginning to recover, but Inspector Bordelli does not feel the same sense of relief. He has not had had he has not had a moment's peace since his investigation of a young boy's murder went disastrously wrong. Unsettled and embittered, Bordelli resigns from the force and leaves the city. He could not continue to work as a policeman while the perpetrators of such a terrible crime were still at large. Now, in the solitude of his new home in the Tuscan Hills, he spends his days cooking, going for long walks, and learning to grow his own vegetables. But the thought of that case, of justice not served, is constantly with him until fate, in which he has never believed, unexpectedly offers him a chance of retribution. So that sounds really interesting. Okay, and then I got a few a few books here as gifts from some wonderful, wonderful people. Um, my good friend Kristen sent me Agatha Christie's Complete Secret Notebooks by John Curran, a fully revised and updated edition stories and secrets of murder in the making. And I'm super excited to have this. So he's just gone through her notebooks and uh, which is, she, she just wrote stuff. So like if she heard a snippet of conversation, she would write it down or something that caught her eye that she thought that would be a good character, that would be a good plot, anything. And so this is um, kind of his compilation of her secret notebooks. And so I'm super excited to have this. Thank you, Kristen. Um, James Scott Burnside very kindly sent me two of his books. I, I reviewed um, the opening Night Murders that he wrote for Book Sirens and uh, I quite, quite enjoyed it. And so he sent me Good Night Irene, a locked room murder mystery. I love locked room mysteries. And to make it even better, this is set in Mississippi in 1927. So <laughs> awesome, right? 
While the Great Flood ravages the town of Vicksburg, the gangster Robert Lasiva is celebrating his birthday high upon a ridge in the mountains. Once the guests has brought one of the guests has brought a special present for him, the gift of murder. Detective Rowan Mannery and his assistant Walter Williams agree to take the case. During one long and gruesome night, they encounter the most bizarre and unfathomable crimes of their careers, including a baffling locked room murder. So yeah, I'm excited to dive into that. And then he also sent me the strange case of the Barrington Hills vampire. Look at that. <laughs> the only suspect has been dead for 40 years. Isn't that great? And look at this. That is awesome. I love it. This is very reminiscent of those old Dell map backs. <laughs> so this is a scene of murder in Barrington Hills and then inside the Browning house. So I love that. So thank you, James, so much for sending me your books. Um, that's fantastic. And then I had another friend sent me a gift card to Indigo, which is a big bookstore here. And I got a few, a few books. Again, books that I've been trying to collect um, the series from. So I got a couple more from uh, C.S. Harris. I recently posted a video about how I'm fairly certain this is my absolute favorite historical mystery series. And so I got What Darkness Brings and When Maidens Mourn. And this is a historical mystery series set in the Regency time period. And then I also got The Testimony of the Hanged Man by Anne Granger. This is an Inspector Ben Ross mystery series. I really like this series. This is a Victorian um, historical mystery series and The Testimony of the Hanged Man is I think maybe the sixth, fifth or sixth in the series. Um, in, and in this one, Inspector Ben Ross is summoned to Newgate Prison by James Mills, a man about to face the gallows. Ben is shocked to hear his account of a brutal murder that he witnessed on Putney Heath on 15th June 1852, 16 years ago. Unable to halt Mills's execution, Ben is ordered to forget the matter and instead to investigate the suspected abduction of a wealthy London gentleman's wife and child. Meanwhile, Ben's wife Lizzie, who has a talent for unofficial investigation, and her maid Bessie take a trip to Somerset House followed by a cab ride to Putney Heath that convinces them that the testimony of the hanged man was true and a murderess is roaming free. It may be too late for Mills, but it's never too late for justice. <laughs> and then I got um, another in the British Library Crimes, Crime Classics series. This is Bats in the Belfry by E.C.R. Lorac, a London mystery. This was originally published in 1937. Bruce Adelton dazzled L London's literary scene with his first two novels, but his early promise did not bear fruit. His, wife's, his wife, Sibylla, is a glittering actress, unforgiving of Bruce's failure, and the couple lead separate lives in their house in Regent's Park. When, ben is, when Bruce is called away on a sudden trip to Paris, he vanishes completely until his suitcase and passport are found on a sinister, in a sinister artist's studio, the Belfry. In a crumbling house in Notting Hill, Inspector MacDonald must uncover Bruce's secret and find out the identity of his mysterious blackmailer. So that sounds good. I also got the first in um, the Rexford and Sloan series by Andre Andrea Penrose. This is Murder on Black Swan Lane. I really enjoy this series. This is another Regency era series, and so I was glad to have a copy for my own library. In Regency London, an unconventional scientist and a fearless female artist form an unlikely alliance to expose a cold-hearted killer. So this is great um, characters, great mysteries, um, great time period. And then last but not least, I got The Last Bookshop in London by Madeline Martin. I have not read this, but I've heard good things about it. Um, this is a novel of World War II published just this year. 
inspired by the true World War II history of the few bookshops to survive the Blitz. The last bookshop in London is a timeless story of wartime loss, love, and the enduring power of literature. So yeah, this just sounds really good. And how could I resist a book that is set during World War II in London and is about bookshops? So there you have it. That is my most recent book haul. Have you read any of these books? I would love to chat with you about them in the comment section down below, and I will see you for another video soon.